Well, let's talk about oh. Danielle Smith, the new Premier of Alberta. This is uh, pretty familiar ground for you because you're from Canada. It sa she sounds like the Georgia Maloney of Canada. What can you tell us about her? She's really interesting. So she has just been made the premier elect. So she's part of the governing party on the party base through the existing, they threw out the premier. So in Canada, they've given up for quite a while now on the idea that leaders are chosen by the sitting party room of MPs because the sitting party room MPs are, are pretty much hopeless. And they didn't want her to be the leader, but the party base elected her last week. It was a series of cast. You had to get 50% plus one of the cascading series of votes. So she won on the fifth or sixth ballot. And she had at one point run the independent business. She was the chair of the independent business in Alberta. And then she got into talk radio. She and her husband ran a small uh, restaurant outside of any of the big cities. And then she got into politics and she was with the conservatives. And then she joined a breakaway party, the Wildrose, which is to the right of them. And she was the leader. And then she controversially took a bunch of the members and joined back with the Conservatives. That sort of killed her career. For five or six years, she apologized to everyone. She went back into talk radio. And when the former Premier Kenny was ousted by the party members, she threw her hat in the ring with a solid Conservative set of policies. So she supported the protesters. She has promised that there will be never again in Alberta COVID lockdown things, any kind of requirements. Um, she is going to fire the entire board of the equivalent of the you know, state health care body. She says they're just not doing their jobs. And most controversially, she's going to bring in a sovereignty act, which basically says that Alberta will not follow the national government because, you know, Trudeau is trying to cut back on all the oil and gas exploration. He has brought in a carbon tax that the Supreme Court all well, let me, appointed let, James, by James, let me just, left wing lips. James, let me just jump in there. I'll quote that Sovereignty Act to you, just just for the for the view the benefit of the viewers. The Alberta the, the Alberta Sovereignty Act says, quote, it will allow the legislature of Alberta to ignore Canadian federal legislation and court orders that it believes are harmful to Albertan interests. Can you elaborate on that, James? Well, uh, all the other candidates running for leader were against it. Uh, she knows it's unconstitutional. The Canadian Supreme Court, all appointed by sort of uh, centralist, mostly left-wing prime ministers, they've just upheld the carbon tax, which probably shouldn't have been upheld on the proper understanding of the sort of federal basis of the Canadian Constitution, but they upheld it. Uh, there's, so there's no hope that that, Constitution, that pro Sovereignty Act will be upheld. But as she said, that's the point, because she looks at places like Quebec, where they fight tooth and nail and, and they get more than they deserve. The problem is, in Canada, you don't have an equal number of voters per constituency. Can, uh, Canada is basically run by the big two provinces of Ontario and Quebec. And Alberta, for 50 years, has seen a lot of its oil money move east. And so there is a separatist movement. It's, it's, you know, it's not as strong as it was in Western Australia in the 1930s, but it's very strong. There's a separatist party. And she is definitely picking a fight with Trudeau. In the last three federal elections, the Liberal Party, I don't think they've won a single seat. So the left-wing Liberal Justin Trudeau, they don't win any seats in Alberta. They might have won one. Um, right in, in neighboring Saskatchewan, they don't win any. So this is the sort of part, you, you, if you could imagine in, in Alberta or sort of in Australia, a state where one party doesn't win any seats at all, election after election after election, that's Canada. So the Conservatives win in Alberta and Saskatchewan and to a large extent Manitoba, they lose out east and Ontario just decides elections. But she's angry and she's tapped into it and she's prepared to fight for stuff. And so she, my I mean, bet is that Trudeau will roll over on a lot of things because he doesn't want to have massive fights with her.